the first thing that you'll want to do is to be able to find your actual Homeroom Student Services Action Projects. There's more than one way to get there. The first method, if you're updating it maybe after receiving an email through ManageBack, is to click on this little icon up here or go straight through the email from ManageBack. So this will open up the emails messages through ManageBack and you can see the SA and CAS Daily Digest. Within these messages, if you click on one, it will tell you from that day who has updated this services action. So we can see in this case Liam has set up an English class. You could then click on that and open up that activity. The second option if you want to look at all of your students is to click on your grade level in the IB at Uptown menu. So if you are a grade 10 homeroom teacher, click on grade 10 and you should find all of your homeroom students allocated under your name. So then you just click on the student that you wish to see. As you can see, we have new changes identified. So these particular students have made updates to their activities recently and are requiring, possibly requiring, uh, an approval. I'm going to click on Morgan. Within Morgan's worksheet, unfortunately at the moment it still shows last year's projects as well as this year's. However, you can distinguish because last year's completed projects have ticks, whereas this year's uncompleted or yet to be approved uh, show clocks. You should be able to click on an activity if you are the homeroom teacher. And then you will find inside all the information that they're asking you to approve. So now it's time to review the application for the activity the student has sent you and either decide whether you approve it or it needs a little bit more work before it can be approved. So if you look on the right here, all teachers should have received this simple checklist with yes or no steps. So again, looking at Morgan's uh, application for his activity, going through the process, we can see describe the activity in some detail. It looks like he has. There's a part about passion, some specific details about friends, some specific details about how many games, consultation with a teacher. So he's been quite detailed there. Provided an aim for an activity, the ultimate goal. So he's provided an aim, it might not be the best, but it's okay. I'll let him continue with that. Identified at least two to four learning outcomes, preferably no more than four. We can see here that Morgan has only added one learning outcome which for a activity this complex, this long, is probably going to be a little bit limiting when he looks at his reflections. So I think that he can definitely add a second, if not a third, learning outcome there. So I'd probably send this back to him and ask him to fix that up. But for now, for the sake of the video, I'll continue on so we can provide Morgan with all the feedback he needs. Chosen outcomes that are relevant. This is particularly relevant for the global and the ethical learning outcomes because sometimes they can be quite difficult to apply. Undertake challenges that develop new skills in this case. It's pretty clear that this will be challenging and it will develop new skills regarding collaboration and organisation for more than so that's fine. Continuing, chosen a project whereby the planning, action and reflection require at least six weeks of work. It's obvious by the size of this project that it will and the fact that it does mention how many games over how many weeks, that that will be covered, that's a yes. And complete the supervisor information. If we look here, it says, Eric, however, there's no email address. Email addresses are important because when the student goes to have their supervisor approve or agree that they've completed the activity, the teacher or the supervisor will receive an email. Without an email address, that won't happen. So two reasons here for Morgan not to be approved just yet. You have two options. One is to verbally inform the student of what he needs to improve or she needs to improve. The second option is to type it into this notes section. Now, if you look to the right here, you've got this copy box and inside there are some pre-created feedbacks for the students. So you need at least two outcomes. I could click that and it automatically comes up. And likewise, click it again, make sure you have complete supervised information. Save note. 
uh, that message should go straight to Morgan through the Manage Back system and he should receive an email. Even if you do tell the student verbally, it's also good practice to do that, just to make sure that everything's being recorded within the system. You can go and see what the student has put together by clicking Edit Activity. And within here is the form that the student fills out. So simply the student would need to click one of these additional boxes and type in an email address here. The organization block box is really important when it's an out of school activity. However, in this case, it's an in school. That's the activity. When it is ready for approval, you've looked at it, everything's there, you've got down to the blue box down here on the right and you're happy. Simply click on the top right up here, back in the activity, and change that to approved. If you have any questions, you're not sure if you should approve this project, as it says here, if you're in doubt, please send this to, to see me. So now we're at the end of the process where the student has asked you to mark their project as complete, meaning they've finished everything about that project. So using the checklist again, this time uh, I'm still in Morgan's page, however I've chosen a different activity, one that's already been finished. So we can see it's been approved in the past, still got all of the information there. So in order to begin to complete this, we actually need to go and check the Reflections and Evidence tab. On that. And using my checklist down the right hand side here, I just need to work through. So the student has uploaded evidence of planning, taking action and reflection. Everything should be uploaded into this reflections tab. You can see here that different types of files can be uploaded. In this case, Morgan has uploaded a journal. So if I was to click on the video, it would hide anything other than a video. But because nothing's clicked, it shows everything. In order to see this better, we can click on these three lines over on the right hand side here. It shows the full journal and it shows which outcome Morgan has clicked on in order to show his, his, his finish that outcome. So in this case, I see evidence of reflection, however there's no evidence of any planning or taking action. So in this case, Uptown Tribune newspaper, good evidence of taking action would have been the actual article that he wrote, and evidence of planning would have been information about the research that he did for the, for the topic of his article. So in this case, according to our standards for this year, definitely not ready for completion. But continuing on, the reflection appears sufficient in length for a student in the grade level. Obviously, there's a little bit of subjective nature to that statement. However, if the student is looking at one outcome, then maybe something like this for a little bit longer would be okay. Clearly, the more outcomes the student needs to reflect on, then the longer it is likely to be. Looking at the reflection, the reflection shows evidence of the learning outcomes chosen by the student. So this student has chosen awareness of their own strengths and weaknesses. Looking through this article, they focus mostly on the oh, this reflection. Sorry, they focus mostly on what they knew about the article. If you decide that that's adequate, then it's up to you. The supervisor has provided a comment confirming the activity was completed. In that case, we actually need to go back to the summary and look down below. At the moment, please comment on the student's progress. Supervisor of New York. So again, you need to go back to the student and ask for that to be done. When all that's done, if you've got yes, 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 you need to ask the student to confirm they've got no additional information to add. Once we click approved, sorry, completed, the student can no longer go in and edit this page. So in this case, marking is completed as it was before. If you want to add notes, again, use the notes section. As the homeroom teacher, you might occasionally be asked to track the student's progress and services action. It's a very simple process, 
here we are inside the student's worksheet with all their list of activities. Simply review those and you go down to this menu and you choose one of the options. Now we're going to use these specifically different for each grade level. So if you're a grade 6 or a grade 10 homeroom teacher, those students only require one project in order to get both service action completed as well as be eligible for academic honours. So if you've got a grade 6 or a grade 10 homeroom, you can choose on track or excellent to determine their progress. The on track is obviously on track, excellent, excellent for their one project or more. If you're a grade 7, 8 or 9 homeroom teacher, students in those grades need to complete one service action activity for the MIP completion. However, in order to be eligible for academic honours at the end of the year, students in grades 7, 8 or 9 must complete two service action projects. So if you're a homeroom teacher of grades 7, 8 or 9, please select on track if the student is on track and you believe they're likely to complete one project. Please select excellent if they appear on track and likely to complete two projects for the year. So once we know what they are, we can choose what, what, what we think they are on track to be. And what this helps us do is if we go back to the roster, it places little flags next to the student. And that allows me as a service action coordinator to then go and follow up with students who might be of concern 